So let's have an overview about the simple end only optimization. So this is the sudo code, and uh, this sudo code it describes every single details right here, and also we have a bow chart instead. Uh, I'm now going to talk about the stopping criteria, and then so we go back to this sudo code. So when do we stop? And then so very straightforward. If we are going to set the number of iterations, say we are going to we are going to iterate this method for ten thousand times, and then so we are going to stop at ten thousand times, or we are going to find a feasible solution or acceptable solution. If the cost that is less than certain value, we are going to stop, or we are going to check the convergence of the um, of the algorithm. If most or all the end. They use the same path, and then it means that the algorithm almost converge, and then we can stop. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to talk about this pseudo code. In this pseudo code, you will just find out that uh, we are going to separate them into a number of sections. That is, they are associated with what I mentioned before: initialization and then uh, path construction using. Um, transition probability and then uh, the fermion evaporation and the fermion update. Yeah, so we are going to talk about this one by one. And now we are going to set up this. Uh, we are going to initialize the tau ij the fermion concentration to small random variable and then set up the counter that is t equal zero that is the iteration number and we have to determine how many n n k. In the end quality optimization, set up the stopping criteria, and then the first one, the first loop right here, that is the path construction using the transition probability. Let's take a look at this scenario. So we have a graph. We have a source node that is one in, and loop seven that is the destination right here. In between, we have a number of nodes. Yeah, and then uh, for this node, and we have different connection. Sometimes it is fully connected. Sometimes it is not. Depends on the application. Now, associated with each link, we have two information. The first one that is the cost. Sometimes uh, you will just find out that I use the D value. Sometimes I use L. Actually, they refer to the cost if an end using one two. Yeah, L one two, and this is the fermion concentration, tau one two. So we assume that the cost using one to two or two to one, they have the same value. Yeah, so that means we allow that the system using different value. But for simplicity in this in this example, I use the same value. So tau one two equals to tau two one as well. Again, they can be different. Yeah. Okay. So for all lengths. We have these two pieces of information. The gray line right here showed the connection. So that means we have link from one to two. We do not have link from one to seven. Yeah. Okay. Now we are going to. That means next we have to determine how many ends we have corresponding to each end. So when we go to this part, we are going to set up the solution of the end. Say. This is the end one, and then so we put nothing in the back end. Note that this zero right here, that is not zero. It means that we are going to choose a low vector right here. Yeah, so we have a, a low vector right here. So we have n k. So we are going to send n k. And right here, starting from one, to find the path going to the destination seven, and then now corresponding to each end. When k that is one, we are talking about the first end. So that is that is this guy. Yeah. So this is this guy. Well, so for this guy, we are going to set up the transition probability. That is p. I J right here P I J that is we have P one two four N one P one three four N one P 
one four four n one. According to this transition probability, we determine which path we are going to do. Yeah, so we will have uh, we will have a table like this. Yeah, so we have the transition probability table, and then we can construct the probability line. So from zero to one. So this is um, the accumulated accumulated probability generate a random number determine which look we are going to use. And then assume that this n pick the look two and look two we have different we have different uh, nooks to choose. So we will have a transition probability. Look two it does not allow to go back to look one, so we have three and five as the feasible nook set. And then assume that this n choose this path. So that means we repeat this process, and then so each time when we pick the note, we add this look into this number. Yeah. So previously we choose look two, we add two, and then so when we it choose five, six, seven, we put it right here. So this is so that is what we have done in this line. So after you obtain this solution. We move all the loops from the xk and then calculate the cost. So that means corresponding to this wet path, we have the associated cost. So assume that this path we have the cost that would be the L12 plus L25 plus L56 plus L67. And then that is the total cost given by this solution for n1. We do the same. Yeah. Now we move on to the n2. So we come up with n2. That is this solution. And then we repeat this process from one to nk. We have the nk solution corresponding to each n. We have the cost f. Yeah. And now the next step is. We are going to apply the Fermont evaporation to each tau value using this formula. Yeah. So that means we are going to when we choose this value of rho, for example, zero point two, this one becomes zero point eight, zero point eight times every single tau value right here. So that we are going to reduce the tau value. After that. We are going to perform the update. So now, after we perform the root evaluation, uh, evaporation, we are going to perform the update for each edge ij. That is tau to one, tau to five, all the edges right here, all the tau value right here, according to this update rule. So now, assume that I consider this tau to five. Yeah. Now again, we have to do this for all the edges right here. I just picked tau two five as an example. Tau two five. Now we are going to check how many ends using two five. We just find out that only end one use this path. So we are going to calculate the delta tau. That is the contribution made by each end. Now we have tau two five used by n one. That would be q. Divided by the cost of x1, and then because as I mentioned, we cannot find any two five edge used by other ends, so the contribution is zero. So when we expand this bit, it would be something like that: the tau two five in the iteration t plus one, that is the Lick's iteration, plus the current tau two five again. This tau value that is after the Fermont evaporation yeah and then puts the delta given by n1 that is long zero and then because from n2 to n n k they do not use this path so they are all zero right here yeah okay to give another example now we consider this path five and six, and then we just note that 
N1 and N2 use the path 5, 6. So that means some of the contribution of the N, they are long zero. So we just calculate the contribution made by N1, that is this value, N2, that is this value, and then no other ends use this path. So all the contribution will be zero. So when we talk about tau 5, 6, and then so this is after evapor evaporation, and then plus the contribution made by N1, contribution made by N2, plus all the contribution made by other N, and then that would be the tau value after update. Yeah. So after that, we are going to increase the counter, that is from iteration 1 to iteration 2, go back to the top. If the stopping criteria is not violated, we are going to repeat this process and then just send the end to find the path again, update the rules and then repeat this process. You will just find out that um, for those paths with higher attractiveness, that is with the value of tau that is higher and then it will have higher probability to be chosen. And then so repeat this process and we will find the solace path.